I'm using acrylics and watercolour paper in this landscape. It's going to be an autumn landscape on the river. We start by putting in the sky, but to stop the paint running right down over the, the water level, I've stressed a bit of masking tape across the paper. So mixing a little bit of raw sienna wash will wet the background paper. We don't want it too deep, it's going to run down because I'm working vertical. When you pin, you of course, you'll be working about a 30 degree angle, so you won't have this trouble. Just a little bit more raw sienna. I'm using my sky and texture brush for this. So I'm just wetting the paper. I've done a simple drawing showing the size of the trees, etc. Rinse the brush now and I'm going into some cobalt blue. It's a good idea if you have a bit of watercolour paper alongside where you can test the depth of colour. I never do that now because I've been painting 40 years. But we're going to put a bit of sky in and I'm just going to wiggle look. Just have a good wiggle like that. And we'll turn the brush sideways and blend the colours in. Bit of colour on the other side. Anybody can paint, it's not brain surgery. If you want to do it, you can do it. It's just a matter of practice makes perfect. A bit more blue in there. A bit across the top. I've always got tissue in my hand that allows me to control the wetness of paint on the brush. Now in a bit more cobalt blue, just a touch of alizarin crimson, not a lot, we'll have all the shepherds out. We'll just put a bit more depth of colour over here. You don't have to worry with acrylics of course, you can always put more colour in later. And again, I'm just using the side of the brush, just blending colour in like that. And what we'll do with a bit of tissue, we'll just take out a few white clouds, soften little bits. I go through lots of this, you know. And my wife comes out of Tesco, I to think we've got an epidemic on all the amount of toilet rolls that I buy. Just softening the edges. Take out a bit there. I've got a few hairs coming out. Don't try and scratch them off at this stage. There's a few hairs on here. I'll wipe these off once the paint is dry. My poor brushes never get dried, you know. When I've finished, I just rinse them, drop them in a bag till I use them again and some of the hairs rot. Right, now let's put in the trees, but I just need to dry it a little bit first. Now I'm going switching to the large stippler and I'm going to put some trees in. I want some Payne's Grey and a bit of Hooker's Green Deep. I'm going to step on the shape of the trees in. Just pretend we're up in Scotland and we're killing a few midges. I love Scotland, they go up quite regular to paint. But they can be a nuisance. So I'm just stippling, I'm just roughing the shape out. I'll finish it up in a moment. I can go down to the tape, you see, and I'll still have my horizon level when I take it off. I want a dark background. The watercolourist tells you to paint light to dark. A bit daft really, isn't it, when you're doing trees, because trees are dark on the inside and light on the outside. 
I'm interested in what I finish with, not what somebody tells me I should be doing. Right, now I'm going to switch to one of my unique tree brushes, the Derwent Water. I'm going to start giving them a bit more shape. I'm going to let a little bit of burnt sienna now to the mix. I'm just going to step it away as I look. Very, very easy. I'm touching the brush very, very lightly. I'm shaping the trees now, the foliage. No water. What you've got to do is to control the wetness of paint on the brush. But all we're doing is stippling. Now anybody can stipple. We all did that when we were at school at five to seven year old. I'm going to use the wonder knife now. I'm going to scratch in a bit of tree structure. Just moving paint. I know some people use a credit card, but the wife won't let me have one. And you got more control with this anyway. Right, we need to dry that, dry that a little bit. And then we'll put on the foliage. Now we start with a bit of yellow orange hazel or acrylic, it's a lovely colour. And we'll just step in a bit of colour. There's a technique in the theatre that applies to painting. Design the set, arrange the elements, and then light it. All I'm doing at the moment is arranging the elements. Just stippling roughly, just to distribute the colours. A bit more white, a bit of cadmium orange, just touching lightly. Going into a little bit of green. I'm using titanium white to lighten the colours. Take the tape off now. One tear the paper, wooden dare. Now I'm going to bring one of the trees further down. So I use a little bit of a paper mask. Paint's grey, dark green. Come down here a bit. And these are going off in a curve. Like that. I'm switching to the sky and texture brush now. And we want to rough out the land area. Bit of raw sienna.
Then we'll have a bit of green, a bit of white. In the distance here. Got a bit of bunk. It's a bit of yellow again, yellow orange as well, with a bit of white. We just add a bit of colour into that. And with the rigger brush. Bit of Payne's Grey, bit of burnt sienna. I want to just, just give a bit of definition to the edge of the bank. All I'm doing is putting on the first coat. I'm not drawing continuous lines. I'm doing a dot dash. Somebody will get the message. I'll just do a little bit on the trees. You'll notice I've always got tissue in my hand because I use that to control the wetness of paint on the brush. Very important. Mixing a bit of cadmium orange with a bit of titanium white. Just going to put a few little gentle shapes in there of a bush. It's just, I'm just changing the colours. Two bits in here. I'll take some of that colour down there. We're about halfway through the painting now. Join me later in the programme and we'll continue.